So there's one more lens I wanted to show, but this is gonna be the one that we're seeing in about, I'd say, 75% of the homes and 75% of the situations, because it's when someone needs a little more assistance than when they're doing a sit to stand. So let's check that one out. Okay, so now we have a sit to stand lift. And this time it's a manual a hydraulic sit to stand lift. They also come in power. So when you use a sit to stand lift, you have smaller slings, ones more like this. They do have options with some more robust padding under the arms, but essentially it's a sling that goes behind your back and under your legs. Again, looking like a U, like a U sling. So with the sit to stand, the loved one or patient needs to be able to sit up on the side of the bed. So this lifts for someone who is still somewhat able-bodied and can participate in their transfer, but their lower extremities aren't hold enough for doing a stand pivot or their own independent transfer. So with this guy, we'll just put the sling around the patient's back. Easy peasy. And then we will attach the belt. Some of them have these and some of them don't. We'll shorten this one up. It helps to keep the lift in place around the patient's waist. All right, and then the straps come around underneath their arms and we're going to attach the lift to here. So it is also usually generally a smaller footprint lift. So a little bit easier to manipulate and the difference with how the person um, transfers is that they stay on their feet. So for someone who is just coming into needing a lift and they can still participate a little bit. This can be a great option because they're gonna feel a little more in control of their transfer. So we'll bring the lift in right underneath the person's feet and then uh, attach our straps. So we wanna do having them, have them lean forward and get pretty close into the sling or into the lift, I should say. So they're gonna get lifted up a little faster. And then this one has the legs. They don't all have it, but since it does, we'll go underneath, just like on our divided leg sling, and we'll attach these up to here. These guys do a little bit of lifting, but in the sit-to-stand model, it's more like a safety net. It's there in case their knees buckle and they um, aren't helping with any of the weight bearing. So they won't have a fall and they'll still be held up. So we just bring straps under the leg, attach here and we are good then I won't even shorten in this case oh yeah we'll do a little bit shorter when you shorten them uh, it's gonna pull under the legs quicker and so it'll pull them up a little stronger but it also will limit them standing all the way up because it's, it's kind of pushing pressure underneath your leg okay so now that the sling is on we have them have their arms be uh, around the sling with it going up under their arm and holding on to the rail. We make sure that they've scooched far enough in, in the bed or chair that their feet are on the foot plate and that we've closed the closed lever on our hydraulic lift so that it will go up when we do the lever. And also that the knee pad is in the right place. Uh, having it on right below the kneecap so it's not hurting their kneecap when they're coming up is best placement. So we'll start to do the lever and it takes a few pumps, but it's not heavy. It takes a minute and then the sling just start to lift them up. And this one, because it has the leg piece, it's going to pull her legs up more similar to a um, patient lift. When we do the ones without, it's pulling up them around the waist and it's not putting that pressure behind the leg. So we'll just transfer, we could have a chair, we could go, uh, it could be a great toileting sling and patient lift. And in this case, I'm just gonna turn around and transfer onto the bed so she could pretend is our other chair. I'm gonna kind of drive straight, even on wood floors. 
Patient lifts could be tricky to maneuver. And we could bring her up higher. But either way, you can see that she's really in a really good seated position. There wouldn't be a lot of adjusting, yanking up in the chair and so forth with this sling and this lift. So then she's over our surface and we just release the bow. Now with slings or a patient list that have the valve, the hydraulic ones, when they're nice and new, they're gradual, they come down nice and slow. Over time, they can get a little worn, so you want to gauge how quickly the valve releases. I have had that scenario where you hit open and it just goes whoop, whoop, way too fast. So always be safe. Always make sure that you're letting your, your level down slowly and into the right uh, position. And this kind of sling and lift setup can certainly help you do that. So Victoria's upright. I don't have to do a whole lot of pulling and tugging to get her into a nice seated position in her chair, in the bathroom, onto another surface, wherever you may be going. So those are the main kinds of patient lifts, the traditional, nested to stand. We've got full body sling, divided leg sling, and then a standing sling. Um, we have our ceiling lift. We're not going to go over that today. These are the lifts that we see in 90% of the cases. And then I would say of these two, probably 70% is in that traditional patient lift. So whichever one works best for you and your loved ones, they're great tools to make sure that you're not falling and having accidents out of bed, into the bathroom, into your chair. And using the right sling can definitely make your life easier and your loved one more comfortable. So thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time.